There you are, welcome back. This is gonna be really exciting. In a previous episode, I showed off a slingshot that I had designed and printed years ago. It was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed the process. And it turns out I've unearthed all of the footage as well. It's not complete and I did have to fill in the blanks, but it's now time after years to show you how to design, print, and test your very own slingshot thanks to 3D printing. Let's get into it. Let me set the stage. It was 2018, and I had just designed a 3D printable slingshot, and I had my Dremel 3D45 3D printer, and I wanted to shoot it in a really unique location. So late one night, I traveled to a local pub, asked them if I could set up a camera and shoot an episode they said it was okay. So here's me in the pub talking about the iterative process I followed when designing this 3D printable slingshot. The design I started off with was this. It's a simple Y design and I extruded the handle. I brought the angles up and extruded them as well. And then I buried a channel in the Y with the thinking that this band could fit in the channel. There we go, look at that. So the band fits in the channel and it holds holds it in place. The only problem is because the channel is open, it's able to use it for a single shot. That's why I went and changed the design to have this little channel in the Y. And that channel was meant to hold the band in place. There we go. So we've got a rubber band right in the channel and you can kind of see it right here. And it almost holds on to it, almost. So we went with one more design, and this was the final design. This final design includes a small little clip that goes over the ends. And this clip was just an extrusion on either side. And then the band itself, you just slide it into place. I practiced this, but you know, I'm in a bar. So I don't, I don't know how well this will go. It doesn't come out. That's important because you want to use it for multiple shots. You just saw me in a pub late at night talking about iterative design and 3D printing. How cool is that? We arrived at a final design for the slingshot and now what I want to do is show you how you can design your own in Fusion 360. I went looking through the footage and the stuff that I did three or four years ago, some of it's still good, which you're seeing, and some of it, it's not good. So the slingshot that you see right here, this was designed long ago and it's in Fusion 360 and you can tell, I mean, I have it all. Look at that, look at that. There's even my old logo. Look at you. But the tutorial itself was never filmed. There was a video of it, but it just steps through the individual steps that you see at the bottom of the screen here. So it just goes back here and it hits play. And this is all it is. This is literally all it is. It's not documenting the steps or doing the numbers or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is follow my old Fusion 360 file and put together the tutorial so you can make your own slingshot at home. Let's get to it. First steps in all of this is the initial sketch. Head up here, create sketch. We're gonna create it on this plane. Now hit C for a center scribe circle, click in place, and we're gonna do 40 millimeters and we're gonna hit enter. Now zoom in a bit, zoom in just a little bit, go up to create rectangle center rectangle, click and drag. Now hit tab because you wanna say this is 20 millimeters. Now what you can do is drag this out until you get an intersection. It changes to a uh, kind of a bluish down there and click. And now that rectangle has intersected with the circle. Well, now you're done. Hit finish. Now we want to actually create a, a body in three dimensions. So at this point, hit E for extrude, click here, here, and here. You'll see it says three selected up here. For distance, clicky click, 110, 110 millimeters. If that's what it says, hit okay. 
Now it's time to make the, the wire, the arms, you know, that part of the slingshot. And I saw it in my previous one done one way. We're going to do it a slightly different way. Let's do a sketch right on top of this, right on top. Now we need to make a construction line. So hit L for line, click this button, and that turns it into a construction line. So if you click here, drag and click down, you see that dotted line. And as we've discussed before, that's a construction line. It's good for measurement, but it's not a part of the final product. Now let's get it all nice and close here. L for line and make sure construction line is not selected. Right here where those meet, click, drag out, and you wanna make that 10 millimeters. L for line again, click that, bring it out. The angle, which is right there, you wanna make that 125 degrees. Now, uh, okay, not 120, not one, <laughs> that's too many, 125 degrees. And the length, 60. 125 degrees, 60 millimeters, hit enter. L for line, we're bringing this one out. It's gonna be at a right angle and we want it to be 25 millimeters. Lastly, L for line, click here, bring it out, make sure it's at a right angle as well and just bring it until it touches this side right here. Gotta make sure it's a right angle. So I'll just type 55 to lock that in. And that's how we know we can get that to line up and hit that side right there. One more, L for line, click here, bring it over to our construction line. Just like that, we've created everything we need. Now what we can do is mirror this. So go up to, I believe it's create mirror we're gonna choose the line, the objects that we're gonna mirror. So this, 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 this. The mirror line is this construction line. Hit okay, look at that. We're now the Y of YMCA. From there, of course, finish the sketch, go out here and you can see the things that we've created. Now click here, click here hit E for extrude. And instead of distance, you want to say to object and the to object is that right there, the bottom of it. And so essentially it's extruding right to the bottom. I mean, we kind of know the measurements, but extrude to the bottom. Now it's currently set as a cut. You don't want that. You want to go over here and you want to click join because those are going to be a part of it. And once you've clicked that, hit okay and it's looking good. Next up is a fillet, right here at the Y. You're going to go, I believe, modify fillet. You're gonna click this line and hold down shift, click that line, and the amount you're gonna fill it is 20. Go ahead and hit enter. And what that gives you is that nice, that nice easy bend in the Y. Next up is another fillet. It's not gonna to be too difficult. So modify fillet, you wanna click this curve here, bring it around, and then click that curve as well. And the amount is 30. Hit enter. And now you've got a nice, easy curve up into the Y. Now it's time to do a chamfer and kind of ease some of those hard edges. So we're going to pick this edge here, that edge there, this one here, and lastly, this one here. Now this chamfer is gonna be three millimeters and it's just gonna make it more rounded and easier to grip. You can kind of see how this is coming along now, right? While we're talking about the chamfer tool, let's add a few more. So I'm gonna select chamfer and I'm gonna bring it around. I'm gonna click this line and this line at the top. Uh, I'm also gonna want this top line here and here. And I'll do the same right here and right here. And if I do three, that looks right. That looks right. Let's hit enter. The next part is something that I haven't really done a lot of in the past. Plus I'm doing things for the first time again. So first I wanna create a sketch on this surface. So click here to create a sketch and click on it and bring it over. Now we're going to project something. Go up to create, project, include, project and click down here 
and then hit OK. That's going to bring this geometry to the sketch plane, which is kind of cool because then we can interact with it. Hit L for line and drag it along this bottom line. See how we can drag along it until we get that triangle. The triangle denotes the center of that line. So click, bring it up all the way till we get to the top here. So it now recognizes this geometry. It's going to be 20 millimeters tall and it's a right angle. So click on it and then we're done. So hit that. Here's what's kind of cool. Watch this. Because that sketch plane is here, but we have those chamfers, you can tell that this, we projected this to the sketch plane and that lets us play with it down there. How freaking cool. Now what we need to do is draw a couple boxes. So this two point rectangle, start up here, bring it over and go all the way down. What you wanna make sure is this is five and that is 20, which it is, and hit enter. We just need one more of those. So click up here again, bring it over until you get down to 20. Make sure it's five, 20, which it is, and then hit enter. And that's it. We've got our boxes that we need for the next steps. At this point, it's a simple extrude cut. So click these boxes right there, hit E for extrude. Now we're going into the model. And so we want to call minus five and hit enter. We've just cut into the model really easy. Next, what I want to do is take the work we've done here and mirror it over to the other side. Now I could go over there, create a sketch plane and do all the things, but there's the mirror command. So let's give it a shot. Go create mirror feature. You could just go down here and click this because that was the extrude cut that we did. Now the mirror plane, really because of how we created this and we're on the center, we want that plane right there. I can just click it. Look at, there's the preview. So hit okay. And it works. Look at that. We mirrored it and we're now equal. Good job. The next stuff we're going to do, there's probably a better way to do it, but this is the way I did it back then. I'm going to create two lines. They're going to connect and then we're going to apply a fillet, but we're going to do it on this surface. So what I want you to do, scroll this around till it says top and then we're going to rotate it because I want it to look just like this. So go create sketch, click this, and then scroll it up because that's where we need to work. Yeah, you can see that, good. <laughs> this is where it gets just silly. Hit L for line. And see that point right there? Connect to it, click it, and, uh, and just bring it out. Just bring it all the way out. Now, make sure that's 125 degrees right there. How long it is, it doesn't matter at this point. Again, probably better ways to do this. <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. L for line, click here at this point. Now bring it out. Again, make sure it's 125 degrees from that, uh, from that for that angle there. Um, do the same on this side. So go over here, L for line, bring it out. Now, here you want, 110 degrees. Now, I I don't know why it's not doing it on the same ones as the other ones, but just, there we go. Now we're cooking with gas, okay? Because this one should be 55. And just click anywhere because we're just, we're savages is what we are. Go here, click it, bring it out again, 55 degrees. Oh wait, it's judging it by that. There we go, there we go, okay. Essentially, two sets of parallel lines. Okay, hit T for trim. See where these intersect right here? You want to keep that. So click to get rid of that and that. Where these intersect, you want to keep. So click and then get rid of these little stragglers right there. Now go up to modify and fill it. Click right here and we're going to give it an angle. And this one, I want 25. Let's do that again. Modify, fill it. Click down here. We're going to go 35. Easy peasy. So it seems a bit hacky, and I don't know if that's the best way to do it because I am not a CAD person, but it accomplishes exactly what we need. Next, now that we have that 
sketch, what I want to do is cut it into the body. So click finish sketch to make sure we're out of the sketch editor. Click here, hit E for extrude. And then as far as where we're going, you're going down, baby. Five millimeters, five millimeters. And that looks proper. So once you've done that, make sure it's a cut. Hit OK. We're starting to get a shape. The rubber band is going to be within this pathway and there are sharp corners up at the top. So now what we need to do is use a fillet to round it off. So modify fillet. Click that line there and that line right there. Both of those lines. And how much? Do five. Gives it a nice rolling edge. Go ahead and hit enter. And there we go. If the rubber band is going to be on that part, we, na we now have a nice rounded edge and not a sharp edge, which is a sharp edge would be detrimental to the rubber band. A round edge caresses it and keeps it warm. Next is a personal touch. Now I'm gonna use an SVG of my logo. You could put anything you want down there. Fusion 360 allows you to import an SVG and then manipulate it. So what I'm gonna do is look at the butt. <laughs> he said butt. Of the slingshot. Yeah, just the butt. In fact, I can hit this front here just to kind of square it up. Now what I'm going to do is click Create Sketch, and it's going to be right on that surface. So it's perfect. Now it's time to insert the SVG. It's really big. These controls allow you to resize. So that one that right there, uh, click it. Drag it, and then that allows you to resize. And then the square allows you to place. I'm going to resize it just a smidgen. Put it kind of center and hit OK. Now I have a logo that allows me to manipulate and do cool things too. Huh, this is kind of exciting. Now what I want to do is extrude these as a cut, but ever so slightly. So hit E for extrude. I'm going to click the D, the 3, and this part. And then in here in here, in here, and there. And the amount, minus 0 0.2. It's just a really slight cut into the material, just a little bit. But look at that. The logo is on the bottom. Oh, that's so cool. That's so, so cool. I absolutely love it. Of course, we could have done it the other way. And let's see how it looks. Okay, so instead of uh, that, let's do this, this, okay. So then I have to do each of these individual letters. Kind of a few different ways to cut the, cut the cheese here. Amount minus 0 0.2. I kind of like that one better. I like it a little bit better. I'll tell you what, we're going to keep this one. There we go. That is a logo that will print out and hopefully it looks good. I guess we'll see. Next step is to utilize this arm. You can see we're kind of right there. So we're going to utilize this. And what I want to do is get it nice and tight and I want to create a sketch on there. So I'm going to hit create sketch. I'm going to click right there and then I'm going to bring it right back over. There you are. Now what I need to do is project some of the 3D geometry lines to the sketch. So like we did before, create, project, include, project. And I'm going to pick this one and this one, just those two. And I'm going to hit OK. L for line, go right up here and connect it. Boom, just like that. L for line is still selected. So just kind of hover over this until you see the triangle. And the triangle denotes center of the line. So, oh, I didn't even hit it. We're L for line, click, drag down at 90 degrees and just go past it. That's fine, that's exactly what we need. Super duper easy, you are done. Click that. Uh, now, let's see, I believe if I go to this point, L for line, can I come down here and attach? No, so what I wanna do is hit L for line and I'm gonna click here and drag straight down at 90 degrees as well. 
just to give me a point of reference, super duper easy, L for line, go up here, and I'm gonna drag it down as well. It, there's probably easier ways to do this step, but I just need something to reference. So we still have L for line selected, click here, come down at a, well, 45 degree angle, but because it's judging it from up above, 180 minus 45 is 135. You just wanna make sure it connects right here. L for line selected, come down over here. Now, because it's referencing here, we're gonna want 90 degrees. Essentially, you wanna come down at 45 on each side and whatever the proper number is from the other thing, you know, how it's judging it is what you want. Okay, we're super duper close. We're still L for line. Now I'm gonna go out here, one millimeter, right out to here and click. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, one millimeter. Easy. And now still L, lots of lines here. L for line straight down at 90 degrees until it connects up with that part of the triangle. And again, where we did ours right here, right there, come down and one millimeter. Perfect. Okay, that's what we have. Now I know there's gonna be probably 18 easier, more efficient ways to do that. This is what I know to do. Obviously at this step, if you're like, no, 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 do it this way, let me know in the comments. We've just done our work here and now we need to extrude. And you know, that's kind of fun. And you can tell when you scroll it out here, we've got some some sketch here and we have to extrude into the model. So what I want you to do is click this and this and hit E for extrude. Now you want to go that direction. And if you take the arrow and drag it that way, you can see it's negative. So if we go negative, I wanna go negative 40, 40 millimeters. Now it's sticking out. It's sticking out because that sketch plane actually has space between the 3D geometry. So what do you do? You change it from a profile plane to an offset plane. And the offset amount, um, I wanna bring it back in. So it's gonna be negative. So negative one added to that zero brings it to negative 10. And just like that, we've extruded. So it says operation join, it's what we want. Hit okay and you're good. Now that we've done the extrusion, we need to mirror it to the other side. Go up to create, mirror. Scroll up just a little bit so you can view it. The object is gonna be this extrusion down here. And the mirror plane is gonna be up here. Now remember, you can turn off the body to click it, turn the body back on. It's gonna give us this highlight of what it thinks it's gonna do. Looks okay, hit okay. Now what I wanna do is add some fillets. So hit F for fillet, and then click this line right here, and that line right, oh, F for fillet, <laughs> there we go. Click that line, click that line, and type in a one. We just need that a little bit. And then we're gonna do the same on the other side. Now I had tried to do all at the same time, it didn't work. So what I'm doing is two at a time, and type one. There we go, now we've got some fillets. At this point, we need to kinda complete this, and this, this section right here we have to fill in. And to do that, we're gonna use something called a sweep. So go up to Create, click on Sweep. Click that profile, click over here to define the path, and then click this path. That's gonna take that profile and sweep it across the path. Make sure Join is picked right here for operation. Hit OK and you've done it. I guess just do it again for the other side. Create sweep, click this profile. Now click over here to click the path. Hit okay. Done. Next up is a sketch and it's a little complex, but don't worry, we'll get through it. Create sketch and click over here. Now bring it back. The sketch plane is right here and here's where it gets kind of fun. Hit L for line. Now first what I wanna do is bring a line from here, this corner down, two millimeters, easy. L for line, and bring a line over this way. You know what, just, just until it meets up, super easy. L for line, bring it up here until it meets this line, 
at 90 degrees. Make sure the lines are meeting. Alpha line again here and all the way over. Okay, this is actually not too bad. Alpha line again, bring it out two millimeters here. Alpha line and bring it down until it connects. This is perfect. This is perfect. So hit T for trim and click right here. We don't need it. And now modify fillet and we're going to go to this corner and we're just going to bring it down like this. <laughs> just like that. Just like that. Let's see. Just like that. Just like that. Essentially, you want this bend to not go past this point. Okay, that's our sketch. That's not bad. Hit finish, because only a few more steps to go. We're almost there. Now it's just an extrude and a mirror. So click here, hit E for extrude, and start to bring it out. Uh, as far as how much, let's bring it in here. So I want it to be kind of, oh my goodness, this way, please. <laughs> Nine seems too much, eight isn't enough, so 8.5 millimeters. There we go. That actually looks proper. That way that rubber band can tuck in. The only thing left to do is to mirror it to the other side because these sides should match. So create mirror. The object is this extrude. The mirror plane. You remember that. That's that one over there. We turn off the body and we click it. We re-enable the body. And it's gonna give us a preview of what it looks like. It looks good. Hit OK. And you've done it. You've absolutely done it. This is the slingshot. Where'd you go? Right here. It's got a logo. It's got a captive area for a rubber band. All we have to do now is print it. No matter how long I've been doing this for, the wonders of 3D printing are never gonna cease to amaze me. Because look at that, here is my slingshot. This was printed on the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, and this is in Ataraxia Art PLA, their PLA Plus. It's a decent material, it's a nice deep black, and I really, really like it. I did three walls, and I did, I believe, 15% gyroid, and so it's light, but it's still, it's stiff, it's stiff. Well, let's see if the rubber band fits. So there's these holes that we made right here. I can bring a rubber band in. Oh, there we go. Bring it around. <laughs> Stretch it just a little bit. <laughs> there we go. Just like that. The rubber band's in the holes. You can see it. And then... That's pretty cool. I really, really like this. Well, now I'm gonna throw you back to 2018 and kind of show you how we tested it. And then, I don't know, maybe we test this one too. There we go, we were just outside having a lot of fun with these. I've got, <laughs> they're all tangled up. This is the old one from the Dremel 3D45 and this is the new one in Ataraxia Art PLA Plus on the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. Both have a rubber band in them. This one's a little bit longer. We had a lot of fun throwing them up into the air. We had a lot of fun trying to go catch them and it's just, this is awesome. These are available on Amazon. They're super duper affordable. Rubber bands, you can get your local hardware store and hopefully you can print yourself out a little slingshot. I don't know, what changes would you make? I'd love to hear it. This has been a lot of fun. I'll put these up on printables if you'd like to download them and you don't wanna make one yourself and I'll put links to this 
down in the description as well. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, design more things, <laughs> and as always, high five.